Good morning. It's October 15th, 2023. Welcome to the broadcast of the First Church of West Bridgewater. I'm Steve Finland. I'll be bringing you a sermon, a song, and a prayer. And I'm very grateful to everyone who takes time to watch these. The song will be from our hymnal. Uh, hymnal is Hymns for Pilgrim People. The hymn is 478, I'll Fly Away. A real favorite. And the sermon is called A Feast for All Peoples. The first scripture is Isaiah 25, 6 through 9. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from the earth, for the Lord has spoken. Then we have Matthew 22, 1 through 10. Once more Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call all those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, maltreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to the slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go, therefore, into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. May God give his blessing to my interpretation today. Welcome to this fall Sunday. We are sad in our congregation because of the loss of our friend, June. I'm going to give a sermon that she would have liked, I think, because it'll be both faithful and realistic. The Isaiah passage is really remarkable. To start with, it's a feast for all peoples, and he will destroy the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. Well, what is it that enshrouds all peoples? It could be death, or more likely the fear of death, since that is what afflicts the living. Also enshrouding people is sorrow, and it mentions in the next verse that God will wipe away the tears from all eyes. And finally, there is disgrace, which God will also remove. So whatever the shroud is that covers all peoples, whether it is death, fear of death, sorrow, or disgrace, God will remove it. So this is one of the great end-time promises of the Old Testament. Scholars have a name for this section of Isaiah, the Isaiah Apocalypse, covering chapters 24 through 27, believed to have been composed later than the surrounding chapters and by a different author, since it brings in concepts not found elsewhere in Isaiah. In these chapters we see an affirmation of a general resurrection. Your dead shall live, their corpses shall rise. Also, there seems to be an end times punishment of the great mythological monster. On that day, the Lord will punish Leviathan, the fleeing serpent. This may relate to the punishment of heavenly rebels mentioned in chapter 24. On that day, the Lord will punish the host of heaven in heaven and on earth, the kings of the earth. Whoever the author was, the biblical tradition accepted these chapters as part of Isaiah's writings, and so today we have these apocalyptic chapters of Isaiah. I find them to be embryonic versions of the promises we have from Christ, of comfort, of Satan falling, of everlasting life, of peace between peoples. The gospel reading for today is one of the parables of warning and judgment. A king has prepared a wedding banquet, but all the people invited have begged off, some of them even mistreating the messengers. 
The king is upset with those whom he invited, and he decides to destroy their city, and to invite, instead, any one who can be found in the street, whether good or bad. It seems clearly to be a warning to the Jews that if they don't receive the invitation, there are plenty of others who will be invited and will come in. They already thought of the Gentiles as random individuals, good and bad, whom one might encounter in the street. And now they are told these people will replace them at the banquet for the king's son. How embarrassing to lose one's status as God's elect. Parables like this one were probably quite shocking and controversial. They resulted in his enemies becoming more determined than ever to get rid of him. The image of the servants gathering everyone in, whether good or bad, meets with Jewish impressions of Gentiles, that it was hit or miss when you went to gather a bunch of Gentiles, a bit like grabbing a bunch of plants out of the ground. Lots of them would be weeds, a few would be flowers. It's funny how Jesus could accurately picture people's prejudices, and in a way that could be laughed at. If you were a Jew, you could maybe laugh knowingly and think, yeah, that's how we often think of Gentiles. It actually can help people overcome their prejudices when they see them as ridiculous. And if God is really accepting Gentiles into his family, that's another reason to drop that prejudice. Now, we Christians have to watch out for the same prejudice, assuming that we are the chosen ones. What if Jesus came again? Would we be ready to greet him, or would we say we're too busy? So part of the message today is about being open and receptive to God's new messengers, not being so self-satisfied and full of ourselves that we cannot recognize a new message of truth when it shows up. Humility and receptivity, then, are the message, along with hope conveyed by the Isaiah passage. There is no distinction between Gentile and Jew in that passage. God will dry every tear, remove the shroud of fear or sorrow or shame that is over all peoples. That's a banquet I want to go to, the one where fear and sorrow are permanently banished, the one where all peoples are delivered from fear and sorrow. This is the Messianic banquet, a promise that in should inspire hope and anticipation in your hearts. So go forth with trust in your hearts. Be an ambassador of Christ in this world, ready to point people to his teachings, which give hope. Know that you are loved and that you can pass on that love to others. But it all begins with trust in God. Thanks be to God. And now let's sing I'll Fly Away, 478. Some glad morning when this life is o'er, I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away, I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. When the shadows of this life have gone, I'll fly away. Like a bird from prison bars has flown, I'll fly away. I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. Just a few more weary days and then I'll fly away. To a land where joy shall never end, I'll fly away, I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away.
remember singing that as a young Christian at the Free Will Baptist Church in Agnew, California. It was a wonderful time and a wonderful song. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O God and Jesus, to you we pray. We wish June, a, a, you know, a good flight into your kingdom as she passes on. We wish blessings to her family who miss her. We wish good health for Winnie and Warren and Carol and Mike. We wish strength and endurance to Ryan. And we wish for all of us to be better disciples always. And we wish that there would be peace on earth, although we are so far from it. Uh, people are being oppressed around the world, and, and this breaks our hearts. And so, Jesus, we pray that you help us be better disciples and to bring your kingdom to earth. And we say the prayer you taught when you said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. And so may you go forth this week with the loving and forgiving spirit of Jesus. May you find truth, beauty, goodness, and love in your life every day. And may you keep it circulating always. Amen.